Welcome back developers. In this video, we're going to look at three more DML commands, delete, lock, and call. Now, delete is one of the more popular ones. Lock and call are not as popular, and we'll talk about them in more detail and why that is in just a little bit. But let's first look at delete. So delete is pretty simple. I come over here in my query window, and I'm simply going to say delete. Now, you notice that Heidi SQL capitalizes this. This is a built-in SQL command. Then I'm going to specify from. This says, okay, where am I going to delete this from? So I'm going to delete from products. Now, if I just say this, I'm going to delete all the contents of my table. Now, because I'm doing this inside of SQL, I'm not deleting the table itself. This acts more like the truncate command, which we've previously looked at. So what I want to do is add an optional, but often very necessary clause, the where clause. So I'm going to say where product ID equals three. Now, if I execute this, if I look down my status window below, you'll automatically see that there's one row affected. I come to my data. You'll see it's still listed here, but I'm going to come up here and refresh. And you notice it now goes away. Now, there's two things you want to notice. Number one is that, yes, that row is gone. But two, notice that my product IDs do not change. Why is that so important? Well, that's because that product ID is probably being used as a foreign key in some other table or tables. So I don't want to change and upset how all this works. But that also leads to the fact that, hey, I probably don't actually want to delete rows from my database, especially if they're going to be referenced in another table and its records. So this is where this active field is and be much better if I simply change it from active to inactive. And in our case, that'd be from a one to a zero. It is possible to delete, and this will often trigger something. So where we can say, hey, if it's a related foreign key, I want to do a cascade delete, which is delete everything that's referencing it. Or maybe I want to go in and prevent it so I can only delete things that are not linked. That works as well. Okay. We'll also want to potentially take a look and say, well, how can I delete this inside of Heidi SQL? Well, with item five here selected, I'm going to come up and right next to where I have the add row, I can say delete the selected row. It's going to verify, click OK, and go notice it automatically does a refresh for me. So deletions are very, very simple. Once again, you probably shouldn't delete something because you want to make sure that you don't affect other tables and other data that might be needed. So preferably, we're going to use something like the active flag in our field active or some other methodology. That way we can know if this product is active or inactive and not available for purchase. Now, what about those other two DML commands? Well, one was lock. What does lock do? Well, lock says, hey, I'm using this table and no one else can work with this. I'm going to prevent people from either reading from it or reading and writing from it. And so this allows us to lock it down. Now, why am I not going to show you this? Well, if you look, lock is a SQL command, but most databases have their own special way of doing it. So, for example, in MySQL, you can see a select, you have your select command, and then at the end of that command, it can put a lock on it for us to lock that data down. Likewise, if I'm going to use something like SQL Server, they have their own methodology. And so since this is not a standardized method across databases, and each one has their preferred way of doing it, we're not going to show you lock. Know the database you're using and then look at how do I reference that. The second one is a command called call. Now call is special because it allows you to call a function. And a lot of times you'll see it references calling some sort of PL slash SQL. That's Oracle's built-in scripting language, which is much like SQL, but kind of like T SQL or Transact SQL. 
It has its own little flavor, some special things. It's its own little scripting components. And since, once again, this is going to be unique to specific databases, we're not going to talk about that. It's there. It's something that's part of the SQL language. But you need to look at what database am I using and how can I use this? So know those two other DML commands, but know that you have to know your implementation of the database in order to be able to effectively use them. Hopefully you found this video helpful. We're going to look at we're going to use locks more commonly in our transaction controls in our next video. If you're interested in doing transactions in databases, you want to stay tuned for that so you get a high level overview of what those are.